Tell me, did I get the microphone turned on this morning? Oh, good. I'm making progress. Would everybody just repeat after me? Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Say it like you mean it. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, that's why we're here. That's who we serve, because he loves us, and he's given us a love for him and one another. Now, the reason there are so few people here this week and last week, as you recall, we had Mike Stone come and preach a few weeks for us. And a lot of the folks that were coming were his people. And uh, they've gone where him, with him wherever he's gone. The point of that is that God has people everywhere. Yes. And, and we're not building some big church. We're going to build the family of God in this place. And we're not ambitious for the world. We're ambitious for Jesus Christ and his love being expressed through faith to everyone we encounter, including ourselves. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> now, I am admittedly, yeah, and I, I do that. I'm admittedly the oldest pastor in this town. And, and I've only recently become the pastor, so uh, bear with me about that. But uh, I wish I was 25 years old and full of fire and, and all that sort of thing. But what I found out as I've aged is that uh, a lot of fires burn real hot and then burn out. The only fire that lasts is the fire that God is, that he puts in our hearts. And our service to him um, isn't really arbitrary. Our service to him is based on his calling in each of our individual lives. And so he gathers us together as a body. And I want to talk a little bit about that body this morning. Uh, I don't know most people's backgrounds, but it doesn't matter if you're Baptist or Assembly or Pentecostal or anything else. None of that makes any difference. The only thing that matters is Jesus Christ and his instructions through his spirit to form a body and to keep that body functioning. Now, all the rest of it's, uh, you know, somebody believes you have to be baptized every time you get saved because you don't get saved completely when you first get saved. I mean, just nonsense like that, that different denominations pick up over the centuries and in, in try and throw at people. And we're not subject to anybody except Jesus Christ. And uh, we have no affiliation with anybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and what, what God has put on my heart and our heart collectively to those that have, have stuck with us is that, that we are going to be a body of people that love one another and that are useful to the community around us in that love. Uh, you know, this, this is not Driven Life Church as you knew it before. Uh, we might even change the name, who knows. This is a new work, and God has ordained it, and he's establishing it. So I just welcome you all to join us and in, in to, to be a part and get to know one another. Matter of fact, take a couple of minutes and get to know one another before I go on. Come on, everybody jump up, say hi to somebody, and come on. <laughs> Oh, uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Keep it up. <laughs> right there. Start with 12. Mm -hmm.
seems to me there is somebody that didn't get up, but that's okay, we'll let you slide. <laughs> Pray your mom. <laughs> You know, the, the point of all that is that, that we're not here for religious reasons. We're here because God loves us, and, and he loves you, and hopefully you love us, and we can all do this walk together. And, uh, so, what I'd like to talk about this morning is spiritual gifts, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you in advance, I'm not suggesting any of it to you. What I'm suggesting is we as a body need to figure out what the Lord's saying here. Because, uh, you know, if you're Pentecostal, everything's spiritual gifts. If you're Baptist, some things are. And if you're Methodist, nothing is. And, you know, you get my point, though. And it's because we won't take the time to find out what God means when he talks about spiritual gifts. And so in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, Paul is talking to the people at Corinth about spiritual gifts. And uh, I'll just read starting in the, f ah, the first verse. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you are pagans, somehow or other, you are influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I got to tell you, I tried that one time on a guy. I said, you can't even say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit's living in you. He looked at me and said, Jesus is Lord. And he was not a believer. So, so you just can't take that and say, well, that's, you know, what does he mean? That's what we want to find out in what I... What I perceive that he means is no one can represent Jesus in life except by the Holy Spirit. You know, you've, you've heard preachers, I know, we all have heard preachers who did anything except represent Jesus in their messages. You know, they, they were talking about the weather, they were talking about some experience someplace, but uh, listen, the only one who can verify the presence of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. You know, the Spirit is with us. You know, where two or more of us are gathered, here he is in our midst. And so we don't have to search out that sort of thing. We know if we're saved that, that we've been transformed. We're just not who we were before. And uh, if you haven't been transformed, give God a chance. You look for him in the, the simplest thing to do if, if you have questions about the Lord and whether he's dwelling in you and leading you is to just start seeking him. Start asking him every day, every night. Start looking for him. And I promise you that if you, and this goes for Christians too, who get wander away. I promise you, if you seek him, he's going to find you. He's not going to leave you out there stranded. You know, it's like that song said, he leaves the 99 to go get the one. And that's the kind of savior he is. In the, matter of fact, that's the kind of God he is, because that's who he is. Okay, so in verse four, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works in all of them, in, in all of them. Now, these don't sound like gifts, do they? Service? Working? Wisdom? Verse 7. Healing? In, in verse 9. Miraculous powers? In verse 10. I'm going to try and fix that. Distinguishing between spirits, uh, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are, are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one 
as he determines. So you've got all these gifts in, if you're Pentecostal, everybody's supposed to speak in tongues. And, you know, if you're not Pentecostal, nobody's supposed to speak in tongues. Well, the truth is some people speak in tongues and some have the gift of interpretation. Does that mean you need to? Not unless God tells you. Come on, we're not, you know, we're not selling anything. We're offering the truth of God out of his love for you. And so, so whether you do tongues or whether you have wisdom or whether you have miraculous powers or prophecy or anything else, that's between you and God. But the gift is to serve the body, to serve one another. He empowers us to serve one another through love. And, and then as you go on, he, he, in the chapter, he begins to explain the many parts of the body. And we're all familiar with that if you've been in church any time at all. You know that uh, you know, if I can't tell the foot, it doesn't need it, and so forth, and et cetera, with every body part. The thing is, we're not complete without each other. We can't serve God without each other. Uh, we can do our little bit out here and, you know, and be great witnesses or, or whatever, but we cannot, as a body, serve unless we're serving together and operating in those gifts that God's provided for each one of us. Now, you don't want to say that in a lot of churches because that's scary because all of a sudden we have a responsibility to one another. And it's God who gave us that responsibility. You know, we didn't make it up. And we don't have a, a body here because God's trying to build something out in the community. God's trying to build something here. And we need to learn, we need to hear, we need to pray, we need to see what it is he wants each one of us to do uh, according to the gift he's given us. And, and if you don't know what gift he's given you, ask him. God's real simple. Uh, it's not a question of, you know, all this theology and stuff. Well, there's probably nothing wrong with it in the end, but the point is that God wrote this Bible through these men uh, for an eighth grader to read because God did not want it to be difficult to find him. He didn't want it to be mind-boggling to seek him. He's a man. Jesus took on the flesh. He walked this earth in his three and a half years of ministry. He healed, he delivered, he, he set captives free. He loved unequivocally, but at the same time, he never told a lie. Never, never gave an imagination. The only thing he did was what he saw his father do. And the only thing he said is what he heard his father say. And uh, I dare say we're a long ways from that, you know. And, but we need to be working toward that. You know, you need to know that when I stand up here, that God's given me something to say. If you don't have confidence in that, I shouldn't be here or you shouldn't be here. You know what I mean? And I don't mean that to be insulting at all, but that's the truth. You know, every one of you is someone to me, and I see Christ in each one of you when I'm dealing with you or having fun or anything. And that's the way we need to perceive one another. Not in imagination. And not in trust that someday that'll be the case. But in fact, because it is the case today. And, and we have a responsibility to the Lord who saved us, who's, who we sold our sin to. He bought our sin. I was sharing that with somebody this morning. When, when he shed his blood... He took our sin and bought it. It's not ours anymore. That's why you can't live in the past. You don't own it. Now, the enemy is going to come along and tell you, well, yeah, but you did this and you did that before you were saved. And, oh, what about this and what about that? And I'm sorry. You do not own that. Jesus bought it with his body and blood. And God resurrected you when he resurrected Jesus. And all through the New Testament, they talk about the Spirit of God. And over the years, the Spirit of God has been mentioned in some circles. 
uh, just kind of casually. You know, the Pentecostals and assemblies are kind of over the top sometimes, or maybe they're not. Maybe we just don't understand. But my point is, we need to understand. We need to know each other. We need to gift each other with the love of Christ that he's placed in us. And then we can become a body. And then God will add the pieces to the body that we don't already have. And listen, there's, there's no hierarchy in the body of Christ. You know, there are prophets and apostles and all that stuff. But no one is above the other. And so we don't have to worry about uh, being under somebody's thumb. We have been set free and we are free indeed to serve one another in Christ together. That's got to add that on. And so then, in chapter 13, Paul brings up the subject of love, and we've all heard that, that great chapter, and in most weddings it's quoted and, and so forth. But in the end of chapter 13, he said, And now remain these three, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. At the end of chapter 12, Paul says, And now I will show you the most excellent way. And the most excellent way is the love of God. The love that he has for you and the love that he has for those around you. As you minister and walk and live and, and laugh and Enjoy the fruits of the Spirit of God. Uh, God's not heavy-handed. He, he will not. He will not abuse you. Because He loves you. He created you. And so, so what is our calling? Our calling is to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And if He's lifted up, He'll draw all men to Him. But, but just remember, we're not building anything and we're not going out to convince the community that they need to join us that's God's work we need to represent Jesus wherever we are people need to see the Jesus that's in us but the truth of the matter is God added to the body every day those that should be saved and, and friends if he can't do that we're not going to have a body it's, it's time, we don't have to sell anything. It's time we, we don't have to promote ourselves. There's plenty of churches around to do that. But we don't want a promotional congregation. We want a family that loves God and is willing to serve Him. And you're the folks. God put you here. And today's your day. You know, jump in because there's no place to go but him. Now, you can go out here and find all the whoop to doos and all that you want to. You know, there's concerts everywhere, and I love Christian concerts, but uh, let me tell you, that isn't going to save you. That's not Jesus. That's holy entertainment, maybe, but, but it's not the life of Christ. We heard this morning Jesus and... Uh, you can't ask for any more than that. I mean, that's, you know, that's the love of God manifest. And uh, though we feel like, and I'm sure the, the musicians feel like, gosh, nobody, nobody really cares because nobody's around. That's so far from the truth. If there were just three of us here, nothing would be any different. That's what we have to get in our hearts. And I'll, I'll say it again, it's not about building something. It's about receiving what God has and loving those that he sends. And it doesn't get any simpler than that. So, uh, I won't try and coerce you or anything else, but let me say that if you have needs this morning, physical, spiritual, whatever, that I'm available, I'll be glad to pray for you. Glad to talk to you. Uh, there are others here, too, that would do the same. And uh, just know this is home. And let it be your home. And, you know, if you've got friends that are homeless, bring them on. 
And that doesn't mean just in the spirit, but I mean those that are homeless in the flesh. This place was built for people that are down and out, not for the religious folks. And so uh, if with that, will you please stand and pray with me? Okay, that was my first non-message, so there you go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, let me pray. Father, we're just so, so thankful, Lord, that you've given us this place and one another to worship you. And God, I pray that you would open us all to one another and allow your love to just touch each and bless each. And Lord, uh, there's nothing else I could ask, Father, except that Jesus be glorified in this place and in the lives represented here, Father. So I bless you and I thank you, Lord, for uh, what you're doing, what you've been doing, Lord, in preparation for this. So in Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you. Amen.